Uh, I'll tell you what, it's been a bit of a journey, hasn't it? Uh, I, I went to CBC after graduating from uh, the University of Western Ontario, had a master's degree in journalism. When I went to uh, CBC in Charlottetown, uh, I, I, I originally covered uh, the agricultural beat in, in oh, Charlottetown yeah. uh, for the local supper hour television show called Compass. Um, and then uh, what happened was Diana McDonald, who was one of the first female sportscasters in the country, uh, was the sports anchor at CBC Charlottetown. And um, she left to go to TSN. And uh, that opened up a spot at uh, Charlottetown to be the sports anchor, which I readily uh, went for. And I got that covered everything from uh, harness racing to uh, local curling uh, to the lobster carnival. It was, it was fantastic. And I went from there. Uh, and what happened was I uh, got my first network assignment at CBC to cover the Canada winter games in 1987 in Cape Breton, Nova Scotia. And I went there to cover, uh, Alpine skiing and cross country skiing. And the Canada games was always sort of like the training ground for CBC Network Sports. Uh, and if you proved yourself there, there was a chance you might get on with the network. Uh, and so I had a great experience in Cape Breton. And soon after that, I moved to Montreal, uh, became the weekend sports anchor there. And that's where I started covering Hockey Night in Canada. And I was there for five years and, uh, and then got the job at the network full time in 1992. Wow. And the, the rest is history. <laughs> that's that's crazy so you've been working at cuc since uh, before i was even alive that's really cool yeah what's kind of the differences between all those jobs and you know being the in-studio host now what would you say are the biggest challenges in terms of the adjustments or the biggest differences that you noticed well you know being uh the sideline uh reporter at the cfl uh rinkside reporter at hockey night in canada and i went on to host the western uh, shows on hockey night in canada it was a great proving ground to, to do the job that I'm doing now, which is the studio host of the Olympic Games. And the reason for that is, is being uh, on site at the field of play is a huge learning experience. And to have contact with the players and all of the athletes who uh, compete uh, for Canada, uh, because I covered world championships as well, and I, I was at Lake Louise and, and called the, the Alpine skiing there. Being on site for a big athletic event, whether it's professional or high performance, amateur, uh, is, is a great learning experience because you, you find out how to relate to the athletes and you actually uh, get the story and the lay of the land by being there. And so you can translate that when you become a studio host, you actually have credibility because you've been in the field and know what happens close to the field of play. It was a tremendous experience. More from Scott coming up in a minute. We're gonna take a quick break though. There'll be more when you come back. Hello, I'm Sean McNall, owner of TG Marketing. We are a promotional product company located in Regina, Saskatchewan. Originally founded by Tom G. McNall in 1985, we are now in our 35th year of business. My brother Ryan and I, along with our great staff, have carried the torch since Tom retired in 2011. For those of you who don't know what we do, we sell items with a company's logo on it, like clothing, pens, phone chargers, Bluetooth speakers. The list of products available is endless. Our products are a great form of advertising. Whether you want to give a gift to a valued client or show your appreciation to your staff, we have a friendly team that can help find the right product for your needs. The key to our success has been our customer service and our vast knowledge of products in our industry. We ask the right questions to get you in line with the proper product for the project you are working on. Stop by 1046 Winnipeg Street and view our showroom. Get some ideas for that next promotion you're working on. Let's make your business what everyone's talking about. Yeah. 
the Olympics is like your baby and that's what everyone knows you as. So what is it about the Olympics that you love so much more than these other events or maybe you love the other events just as much? I don't know, but what is it about the Olympics that you're so passionate about? Well, I, I think the thing is the Olympics are much more than a sporting event. Um, you know, the, the, these other events uh, are, are really based around performance and sport uh, so whether it be uh, NHL hockey and the Stanley Cup playoffs, it's a sporting event. Um, uh, same with the Grey Cup, the CFL, uh, or, or you know uh, the World Championships of whatever sport uh, you want to talk about. The Olympics is tied to something which is called the Olympic movement. There are a set of values attached to it. Uh, there's an Olympic ideal. Uh, which is, is to, you know, bring the world together in a time of peace to demonstrate what is humanly possible. And the Olympics uh, are open to people of every race, faith, gender, uh, orientation, and uh, circumstance from every geographical region of the world. Uh, so the Olympics are, are a much bigger thing. Uh, they're a much more ambitious enterprise. And, uh, you know, I first sort of fell in love with the Olympics when I went to summer camp in, uh, in Ontario, in, in Halliburton. And uh, every summer we had the mini Olympics uh, <laughs> where, you know, the baseball diamond was all uh, decorated with bunting and, and uh, torch bearing runners arrived by the war canoe at the beach and lit the cauldron, which was atop the baseball diamond. And the entire camp was divided into country teams uh we built embassies and there was an opening and closing ceremony and you know it, it it's a real it, it is a spectacle mm -hmm. that's what i love about the olympics it's a spectacle it's it's the greatest recurring spectacle mm -hmm. on the face of the earth mm -hmm. and there is no event on the earth that is as ambitious as the olympics and aspires to be all things to all people and I, I love it because it's much more than a sporting event. It's it's an event which is about humanity. The camp I went to in Muskoka did something similar. Um, it was just with two teams, but it was like Lumberman and Voyagers. It was a similar idea. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was yeah. really fun. We had like cheers. We had an opening campfire, closing campfire. It was, we had leaders yeah. as well. Yeah, it was really, really fun. Yeah, well, I went to a camp called Kilku Camp in uh, Halliburton, and, and the Olympics – had been going on at Kilku uh, since 1932. Oh, wow. And they, they divided the camp into five teams, you know, and it was, it was England and Canada and the United States and Russia. And, you know, before that it was, it was South Africa and New Zealand. It, it was, it, it was pretty cool. And, and to hear our director say, you know, those famous words of the Cooper town when he said, uh, the Olympics are uh, more than about victory. They're about the struggle and the taking part. It was uh, it was hugely important as I kind of evolved into uh, what I've become today as the Olympic host. Thank you so much for tuning in to the RP Show pre-show. Once again, I'm Rachel Bishop. Stay tuned. Main events coming up next. talk about the Cowboys every day. You understand there's 31 other NFL teams. How many Major League Baseball teams are there? 30? 30, 32 NHL teams. They only talk about the Cowboys. How about that? They're America's team and by the way, it's all just marketing. Have you watched the documentary on America's team or the football life? It was just marketing. It was the late 70s. But the football guys didn't like it. This is the Rod Peterson Show. Alright, we're here. Happy Friday everybody. Welcome to the RP Show. It is a football Friday. I don't think Darren's mic is on. Can we get on that? There you go. Oh, we're good. It's going to be right. a long warm up for the next 20 <laughs> minutes if you're not part of it. Uh, we got John Frenzy here in his pumped up kicks. Can we say that? You're going to see that shortly. John Frenzy's oh, yeah. got new shoes for today's performance. And uh, we're ready to talk football. You saw or you heard off the intro there about uh, ESPN always talking Dallas Cowboys. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, thank you, Nelson Hackowich, for showing up to our, uh, our South Regina estate to fix my ESPN last night. So I'm watching this morning, and it's not about the Dallas Cowboys, although they're talking about the most overhyped team in sports being the Dallas Cowboys. That did come up today on a perennial thing. But they're talking about uh, Aaron Rodgers, and that is in our Quick 6 show topics today, actually uh, coming up very shortly in it. On the program, John Frenzy, who's here, as I mentioned, Tori Gurley, uh, NFL alum, Packers, Browns, CFL with the Argos, and Jarrett Bush. This is outstanding. Clark just, I asked him, what's the connection to Jared Bush? He's like, I just found him. It's not like he's anybody's buddy or anything, or he's not on a show anywhere. He's a Green Bay Packer Super Bowl champion, a former Calgary Stampeder, and he lives in Green Bay, and maybe he can confirm the, rum- the rumor that Green Bay is exactly like Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. That would be good. In aesthetics. Yeah. He's probably been to both. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. If, he was with if anybody stamps. would know, it's him and John Ryan. So that's what's coming up on the program today. But Director Jordan, can you please hit the quick six show topics, please? And thank you. Actually, I'm just going to throw in some howdy do's from people here. Dean Tix watching says, happy football Friday. Can't wait for Jared Bush, special teams demon and had a pick versus Pittsburgh in Super Bowl 45. He's in Green Bay, Dean Tix. So how about that? How about that? Jay Bockhout uh, from Vancouver. Says, oh, he met Scott Russell here in Vancouver last year during the 10-year anniversary celebration of the 2010 Winter Olympics. So we're con and wide on the program today. And Scott Russell was part of the pre-show that we do here with intern Rachel. Okay, let's go. Did he hit it right? Can you hit it again? Quick six show topic. Thank you. Let's make sure everybody's awake today. Number one. Kudos to the Colorado Avalanche for winning the President's Trophy last night. Uh, clearly, I wanted the Vegas Golden Knights, Canada's team to get their hands on that trophy, get their name on the trophy, but it didn't happen. They, the Golden Knights could have beat Colorado this week to clinch it, and they lost to the Avs. 2-1, Vegas did. So all the Avs had to do last night was spank the lowly L.A. Kings. Sorry, Todd. And I watched the game, and it was a 5-1 Colorado victory. They rolled. They romped. And Colorado scares me. But I'll just say kudos to them. But my other leftover on that is nobody remembers really who wins the President's Trophy. It's the Stanley Cup. But you got the sense. I don't know if you were following any of social media last night, Darren, but the Golden Knights, they would have liked to have got their name on it and clinched the division title. Of course. Like it's a banner. That's... It matters. It, it does matter. It matters. Until you lose it, then it doesn't matter. I know. And we always talk about how often does the President's yeah. Trophy translate to a Stanley Cup. Not, Not that, that often. often. But it matters. Interestingly enough, the... President's Trophy didn't start until, like, 1986. Hmm. The Detroit Red Wings have won it six times since 1986. That's the most. Can you believe it? Wow. And then Colorado's got three. It wouldn't be that hard to look up. But there's, like, a a handful of teams that have had a lock on that. Washington's won it multiple times, right? And sooner or later, you do win a Stanley Cup. Another thing that I'm watching last night in that game was Tyson Jost. He just breaks my heart. And I want to ask you people, who's the one player in sports? They don't have to be a great or an icon, but they just, they, they just always break your heart. Um, in the case of Tyson Jost, he could have come to the Regina Pats, God's team, in 2018 because they had his rights, for the, and that was the year that we were hosting the Memorial Cup. I say that as alum, and he didn't show up. He stayed in the NCAA. They could have used him in the gold medal final of the Memorial Cup when they lost 3 nothing. And then last night, in a game that the Golden Knights need Colorado to lose, Jost goes out and gets the party started with the first two goals of the game. And then they just score. Bing, 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 bing. That's what scores, scares me about Colorado. Yeah. They just score in bunches, man. And that's a backbreaker when the other team's doing that. Yeah, when they're good like that and they have that fire. And that's what scares, I think, a lot of people about the Edmonton Oilers. It's a similar situation with, with the high-end talent. It's when they do get rolling, they're hard to stop. That's, uh, that's not good. <laughs> when you reside in their division and are a col- on a collision course with them in the division final, that being the Honda West. What else did I have here for leftovers from the NHL last night? Oh, how about this? So it's going to be the Blues and the Avs in round one. Blues should be merely a speed bump, I would think, for Colorado. And I thought the same for the Wild and the Vegas Golden Knights. However, the Wild beat the Golden Knights. Not only five out of eight meetings this year, no team in the NHL has beaten the Golden Knights more than Minnesota in the last four years. Wow. 
So put that in your pipe and smoke it. All right. Uh, Norway checking in today. Norway, where it is currently 6.06 p.m. Trent Bruner's watching. He says, uh, Rachel, the intern, did a great pre-show interview with Scott Russell. It seems like the health authorities don't want to take any chances, but can the CFL adapt? The maritime bubble may be the only solution if authorities agree and the owners are willing. The rest of the football chain needs the CFL. Have a good weekend, everyone. Same to you, Trent. And I have to ask, have you been reading my diary? Because that's all that I've been thinking about. And let's move to point two. Actually, that's not the CFL. i got a couple NFL items that I'll get to with our guests and yourself here. Aaron Rodgers, uh, as of this morning on uh, ESPN, the, now it's come out that he may sit out this year. I mean, this is, this is just such a divorce, right? The Packers are like, no, no, everything's fine. Everything's fine. It's such that. Typical, that whole picking sides thing we talked about weeks ago, the Packers are trying to purport that things are fine and things aren't fine. So our poll question today is, for Capital Automall Universal Collision Center, will we ever see Aaron Rodgers in a Green Bay uniform again? Tory predicted last week that it's going to end in a trade. Um, all our get- Mike Pritchard said the same thing from VEASAN that was with us. What are they saying there? Dan? 71% say no. Yeah, so over the last couple of weeks, it's yeah. changed, and people are realizing it's probably over. So that's one thing we'll talk about today. Another one is Tim Tebow continues to be raked over the coals. And a lot of it's by the football guys. You know, like I've always loved Tim Tebow. We talked about it earlier in the week. So I'm a Tim Tebow guy. But the football guys are saying he's had his chance. He kind of blew it. He's not still in the NFL. Why are you giving him a tight end position when there's all these young kids coming out of college or guys that are in the league now that could play the position better? He's going to get eaten up by the massive defensive ends, and that's all true. But it's Urban Meyer's team, the Jacksonville Jaguars, and Tim Tebow is the hometown hero. And some are saying that it's a diversion tactic to take the pressure off Trevor Lawrence because all, all the focus is on Tim Tebow. Would you, would you I can think that's a that. thing? No, Why not? You think it could yeah, be? Yeah, why not? I mean, you look at Urban Meyer. Didn't he not coach him in Florida? Yes. And you're in Florida. It's home, right? Tebow's coming home. And I can see a lot of good reasons to do it. You know, we want him in our locker room. We want, again, didn't really work out much with Chris Strevler in that Taysom Hill mold in Arizona, but Taysom Hill doing his thing. We want that versatility. We can put him in a wildcat spot back there where he can throw, he can run, he can catch, he can do all these things if he's got that physical ability. Takes the pressure off Trevor Lawrence. I like, you know, there's that relationship with Urban. There's a lot of check marks on, you know, a lot of boxes being checked off for, for Tim Tebow. Whether he can play or not, a lot of it's coming from guys who are sitting there wishing that they were still playing. You know, so I like it. Here's another guy that's just uh, speaking to my soul right now. Jack in Alberta watching says, leave Tim Tebow alone. Haters hate. If the man is good enough, sign him. Haters are going to hate. Not only the Jaguars are listening to what the ESPN pundits are saying. There were CFL players tweeting at me saying, no, no, he's had his chance. Well, of course, because you want the chance. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's all perspective. Uh, Hey. Ryan McCarthy, do we have a sound effect for when somebody boosts a $5 super chat on YouTube to get his comment read? Do we have a sound effect? I'll take anything. Well, we've got to work on that. Sure. We need one. Or an explosion. Can you guys find that real fast? Anyways, Ryan McCarthy watching in Saratoga, New York says, Good afternoon to North America, Mexico, Norway, and Qatar from sunny Saratoga, New York. And he says, And I'm late, so... I like it. If we, that will wake people up. Yes. It's hot in here, too, now. <laughs> How about that? How about that? I like it, guys. Uh, po- uh, point four. I'll get into this later with, uh, with the guests as far as NFL schedule leftovers and uh, RP uh, VIP show. Sorry, RP show VIP sports trips. I talked to the travel agent again this morning. Are we narrowing down any destinations? We've got uh, feelers out to both. I don't want to say this, but. Miami again, because they nice. were so good to us last time. You know, we were planning on going there in 2020 before the pandemic. And L.A. So those are the two that have had feelers out so far. There will be others. I mean, obviously, uh, in Florida, there's other, there's other teams there and in California. We're probably looking at one of those two. So one or the other, California or Florida. Sounds like a Jody Mati- Messina song. <laughs> Heads, California, <laughs> Heads, California, Tails, 
Carolina. Carolina. That's right. Love that song. Every situation can, can be related to a country song. Mm. Yes. Heads Carolina, tails California. I had it backwards. I'm, I'm singing it in Heads my head. Heads Carolina, tails. Somewhere cleaner, somewhere warmer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how, about how about that? James in Borden, Manitoba. I thought Tim deserved a better shot than he got. I'm glad to see him back. Can't necessarily agree with you there because I think he got every shot imaginably. Started a playoff game for the Denver Broncos and won it. Mm-hmm. He had his chance in New York. My God, everybody wanted it to work. Even God wanted it to work out for Tim Tebow and the Jets, and that didn't work out there. I think he got his shot. Um, everybody's going Vegas, Vegas, Vegas. Well, not everybody, but a lot of people want us to go to Sin City. As I said the other day, Vegas isn't going anywhere. Last I checked, it's always going to be there. So yeah, and it's the first real year where they're opening it up to fans, right? So it's going to be incredibly difficult to take a large group, and we know how big our group's going to be to get in there. With, Sounds dicey. Unless you want to pay like a real premium. So look at next year or the year after we'll go to Vegas. From Judy, she says, good morning from Katepwa. Good morning, Judy. Thanks for checking in. Hope you're enjoying the show. Um, on the Vegas thing, and I'm going to get to the CFL leftovers here. It's actually my last point, but just ahead of that. Yesterday was a bit of a tipping point I found in the CFL. It was, I've mentioned this in my column today. When Ontario said, we haven't cleared the CFL's return to play. No. And BC had said that on the weekend. And I think there's going to be other provinces that say that. That was kind of a tipping point for people in the CFL. Fans too. I had people saying to me last night, I'm checking out now on the CFL because I don't know who to believe. And... That hurt me a little bit because I'm reporting on the CFL and I feel that you can believe me. And as somebody said to me on Monday, somebody I respect the most in this media business said, Rod, as long as you keep speaking the truth, telling the truth, reporting the truth, you'll have nothing to worry about. And I said, I'm not worried about anything other than people are starting to get upset because they don't want to hear the truth. Vis-a-vis what happened with Lisa McLeod yesterday, the heritage minister in Ontario. She just simply said, I can't see them kicking off August 5th. We haven't cleared it. And she just got an avalanche of crap thrown at her. Was that her fault? She was just speaking the truth, Darren. Yeah, I know. And people don't want to hear it. And I'm like, I'm tired of being the bad guy. So I'll just talk NFL. Because if you don't want to hear what I believe to be is the truth, then I'll just stop speaking it and you can cover your ears. And as my brother, the cowboy, would say, float along in the world of... What does he say? Rainbows and unicorn piss. If that's what you want, have it. How about that? So my point is, would indoor football work in Canada? Because Las Vegas, the Golden Knights, got an expansion franchise. And that's my point. There's a lot of people in the CFL now going, hey, things aren't really moving here. Maybe the indoor league's a place to go. You know, maybe Las Vegas is a place to go. And somebody had written in here earlier in the week and said... Could Canada be a destination for an expansion franchise for the Indoor Football League? And nobody can call that a twice-failed league because it's been around for 14 years. What do we need America for to do that? We could be the Indoor Football League 2 or whatever. Could it fly? And for that matter, Darren, you see people saying, Aras said it on this show the other day, that spring football has been proven to not work in America. I'm kind of tired of arguing about that too. So... Do you think indoor football would work in Canada? It could. It could. I, I really believe it could. Um, I think we love football. I think we're open to it. But I think, you know, it takes the right people with, you know, incredibly deep pockets to do it. Um, you have to market it the right way. But I think, you know, if you sell the game because we know it's good and you can get it into people's living rooms and you can get people to watch and follow and know the storylines, I think it could absolutely work. And... <laughs> Because of the void in this country of Canadian Football League at, at this time, if you could slide in right now and get people hooked, it would take a full season. But if you could get it done, you have their attention. You have their attention. Mike Blackbird in Toronto writes in in all caps, it was me on Olympic size ranks. I'm, okay, Mike in Toronto, Mike Blackbird, it was yours. Yeah, I'm, I wasn't stealing it as my suggestion. I said somebody brought it up and it was you. I'm just thinking now here uh, in the Brand Center, they're going to have to get that clock out of the way because... There won't be any Hail Marys. But, it, Dink. but even now, there's enough indoor 
football facilities too, <laughs> training facilities and right. whatnot. You could make something work. Um, Patrolman Pete, I have reached a point where the only CFL news I'm interested in hearing is that there is a game tonight. Everything else, draft schedule, fan base, whatever, meh. Yeah, I think a lot of people are moving on. And that's really the only CFL leftovers, although there is news today. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers have signed Robbie Lowe's. And you want to talk about connections. Robbie Lowe's, a veteran linebacker with the University of Regina Rams, and his father, Bobby, is not only the all-time winningest coach in Brandon Wheat King's history, but he's also a uh, top scout with the Vegas Golden Knights. How about that? Hey? All connected. Is Tory connected? He's not. Oh, great. Football, guys. The bane of my existence. I'll just read a couple more as we sit here. From Ryan McCarthy in New York. The National Arena League could always use a franchise or two in Canada to rival with my hometown Albany Empire. I'm sorry. I love America. But we don't need it. We can have a Canadian indoor league. We don't got to worry about farting around with the border and American players and a ratio. We can stock it with Canadian players. Sorry to be that guy. Maybe we play you for the league championship, but we're good. Um, from Phil. Good morning from the moon. <laughs> he says, food's great. The atmosphere sucks. People are punchy today. And in a good way. People are, I don't know what it is. Yeah. They're in a good mood today. I know. I'll just keep. I'll break and come back with uh, hopefully Tory Gurley. But more fun and frivolity after this. This has been the uh, warm up. It's brought to you by our good friends. Oh my. God. What? Football guy oh. just texted me. Who will remain nameless? <laughs> he says, I see you. I see you running the indoor league. Love it. I'm just throwing out suggestions here as to how things can... You understand that happens. It's me running the indoor league. Yeah, right? you're running it. I'm just a face. <laughs> I'm running the news conferences. Anyways, the warm-up's brought to you by the Four Seasons Sports Palace. Starting Monday, come on down to catch all the Stanley Cup playoffs. Of course, B-Leaf. I think it's your Leaf fan headquarters, okay? In the sweatpants capital, the Four Seasons Sports Palace. More football ahead on a football Friday. You're watching on Game Plus TV, YouTube and Facebook Live, and 24-hour sports radio for Suds Full Service Car Wash at rodpeterson.com. Listen live. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Don't rack your brain trying to source the equipment and materials you need for your business. Rockstar can operate your entire supply chain, from PO creation to expediting your shipments, all from our office. Leverage the buying power of the Rockstar Buying Group to not only save money and time, but also the headache. From gloves to glue, we can provide it for you. Find out more at rockstar.com. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. BDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Capital Ford Lincoln is your used car destination. We're overstocked and priced to move, so shop online or in-store to get the best deal on any one of our massive selection of pre-owned vehicles. Every pre-owned vehicle at Capital Ford must pass a thorough inspection, ensuring that your buying experience is quick, easy, worry-free, and just like new. So save the depreciation and buy pre-owned. Capital Ford Lincoln is your used car destination. 1201 Pasqua Street North in Regina. Is it time to take your event online? Bring it to IKS Live. 
we've got a fully customized virtual event platform with remote guest support for your next fundraiser, talk show, conference, performance, and more. IKS Live offers live streaming to Facebook Live and YouTube and pre-recorded capabilities, both in our studio with green screen available and on location with pre-production and post-production services. IKS Live, the proud producer of The Rod Peterson Show and The Recovery Hour. Visit us at ikslive.ca. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. We started Suds Car Wash in 2003. There's a bit of us in every part of the business. I've been working here since I was about 10 years old. Hard to believe it's been 12 years since. Working with my family has been great. My mom and dad have taught us the importance of hard work. I've been here since I was 10 years old and my dad has taught me a lot about quality work. From all of us at Suds Car Wash, we make your car shine. Hey, Rod Squad, now you can join the team with your very own RP Show gear. Head to rodpetersonshop.com and get yours today while supplies last. It's just like we wear on the show. Hey, honey, can you get one of the kids to show me how this Twitter thing works? Honey, I need to get on Instagram. Time for more of the Rod Peterson Show. Welcome back, everybody, to a football Friday just ahead of Tory Gurley. Packers Browns alum and uh, former CFLer just talking about the Canadian Indoor League and I'm not sure that I would put Canadian on it but I've long dreamt of a Canadian Indoor League and I'm just saying a lot of CFL folks are starting to look southwards to jobs in American indoor football because they're playing and things aren't looking good here from the puck and pigskin podcast in uh, Red Deer they write in and say, I can see Rod running the Canadian Indoor League news conferences. He'd be the John Tortorella of the league. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. And here's why. Although I don't have a problem with torts at all, I hear he's a good guy. I've never met him. I do have a respect for the media and the job that they have to do. Torts clearly doesn't. So I wouldn't treat the media the way that John Tortorella does. Uh, he's not the only guy. That does that, but there's some guys that understand that the media has a job to do. They don't understand, don't respect it, and it's too bad. All right. John Frenzy's here. His appearances are brought to you by Wheaton Kia. You can find him in North Regina, corner of Albert and Avonhurst, as is our appearances with Tory Gurley. Can we bring him on in here? Tory Gurley, and it's been far too long. Uh, well, I guess it's been a couple weeks, but it feels like a, like a lot longer, Tory. That's how much I miss you. Are we going to start with your big news or save that to the end? No, we can start off with that. We can start off with that. That's the big news. Go ahead. Hang on. Breaking news from the Gurley family. What do you got, Tori? Yes. So my wife, uh, Kim, and I were expecting our first. Uh, it's a boy, Tori Gurley Jr. in November. Nice. So How about that? Congratulations hey, to my, hey, to my hey, new wife. It. That's wonderful. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Hey. That? Tori Gurley Jr. Will it be Tori Gurley the second? Is that will be his name bar on the back of his jersey or what? What are we looking at here? Junior, the second. We'll get it figured out pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. All right. Congratulations, man. And please pass them along to Kim. And yeah, that's great. Uh, I'm sure the Hubics are just over the moon with that. That is, that's tingling. Nothing else seems to matter after that. But I got to start with the Aaron Rodgers news. It's our poll question today. Will he ever be seen in a Packers uniform again? ESPN this morning, they're saying that they think that Aaron's going to sit out this year if he doesn't get traded. Uh, what anything changed since the last time you and I've talked about it? It wouldn't shock me if he set out. You know, I can see him standing firm because uh, Aaron is a man of pride, and you know has been hurt. You know, the the Packers have obviously they're they're a professional organization, and they're going to do things the Packer way. But Aaron just wants the same type of respect that his peers gets, uh, a la Tom Brady, Drew Brees, um, Patrick Mahomes. Those guys have input on draft play, on free agents and drafting players and Aaron hasn't had the luxury of that and now he's like you know what you guys go out and win without me and and people love to say football is a team sport but 
<laughs> well, you don't have number 12 at quarterback, man. It's going to be a long season. Go ahead, Frenzy. He's got a million thoughts uh, on uh, this. Tori, I got to ask you that the number one question I can see is, Mark Murphy is the president of this team, the president, overriding officer of operations. He got rid of Tom, Ted Thompson, his old buddy, kicked him out. Now he's stuck over. He thinks he can run everything. He goofed. Because uh, Aaron Rodgers is sacred. He's a great athlete, one of the great athletes in sport today. He's just not an ordinary guy. He's a special trophy. And you've got to treat him with glo- uh, kid gloves. And, well, with the respect he deserves. I think he deserves a lot of respect and input in most of the affairs there that concern the football team. Because he's making it a great football team. Absolutely. He's carried that program for the past, you know, 14, 15 years. He's done everything you can ask for, Super Bowl MVP, uh, two-time MVP of the league, and still not having any input. Like, what more can a person do to prove, like, hey, I am different from the, you know, 30, 31 other quarterbacks in this league. You know, I'm a Hall of Famer, and it's unfortunate that um, at this level, when you get to talking about being a, a professional, egos get in the way, and it seemed like uh, you have you know two egos. And you know, I'm on the player side on this one. I, I'm happy that Aaron is sticking up for himself because you know in the NFL they love to just treat us like another number. So I, I'm happy Aaron is outspoken, and I hope he he get what he wants at the end of the day. Well, uh, I just looked it up. He is the fifth highest paid quarterback in the National Football League. And what you're telling me is it's not about money, right? It's about wanting input. And I, and I get it. So I guess the question is, Denver seems to be the likely destination via trade. Where do you see it going? Yeah, I can see him having a great career if he, if he ended up in Denver. Um, you know, they have a supporting defense. And that's what he needs. He does. He needs um, elite players on the offensive side of the ball, but he needs elite players on the defensive side of the ball as well. And I feel like having John Elway, uh, he, a Hall of Fame quarterback, Super Bowl champion himself, he knows what it takes to get to that championship level, and he was able to do that with Peyton Manning. So imagine what he can do with the talents of Aaron Rodgers. I mean, I, that just seemed like a, a, a great fit for him. Folks, if he got NFL questions, we got Tory for about another seven minutes. And obviously, Lynch, do you? What? Because I got questions. You got questions for well, Tory? The same thing. I mean, I. Well, think... let's move on from Rodgers, though. Okay. Anything other than Rodgers? Well, I'm saying I said no, not a bad trip for a bad uh, trade for for uh, Green Bay Packers. Locke is not good at quarterback. Simple as that. Locke and three first round draft choices, Tory, still aren't good enough because Locke is not that good enough a quarterback. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah, you're right. Uh, that kid, he, he's a few years away. So, you know, I, I would just give away my whole draft for the next few years. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, it's what are you waiting on? You know, if you're trying to win now, then what better chance you have than playing with the Hall of Famer? So I, I would I would be happy to give that away for Aaron Rodgers. Well, the trade that they were supposing on ESPN this morning was a similar Stafford Goff deal with three first round picks thrown in going to Green Bay. Anyways, on Tim Tebow, you were in the league, I believe, when Tim was in the league. They're talking about him playing tight end for the Jaguars. I don't think he's officially signed yet, but there's a lot of pushback against it, Tori. Where do you stand on the idea? Yeah, I'm on the opposite side of it. Um, I get it. You know, he has a great relationship with Urban Meyer, and, you know, that's just like, you know, on your show, I have a great relationship with you, and that's how I'm able to come on, but you got to, at the end of the day, you have to respect the game. And if you bring in someone that's, you know, nine years removed from playing football, I mean, that's almost like a slap in the face to every person that's a free agent and every kid who went undrafted that easily could have been drafted, but it was only 200, you know, 50 something spots. So, um, you know, I'm not going to say it's a waste of a roster spot, but you know, it's it's going to be a lot of scrutiny in that locker room because now it seems like Urban Meyer is bringing in his friends instead of bringing in people who are, um, you know, who position themselves to actually be a part of this team and help them win. Like, you know, when I, when I look at Tim Tebow being a tight end in the NFL, I'm not thinking of a guy that that's going to be successful. No kidding. Some Quest or comments from viewers from Jeff the Stamps fan at Rogers' age and with the Packers conceivably being a contender, sitting out a year seems foolish. From Troy in Toronto, I'm a Packers diehard fan, and I usually will side with the storied franchise, but in this case, the team is totally at fault. As soon as Love was drafted, we all scratched our head and wondered what the hell the Packers were thinking. 
Well, I'm not a Packers fan, never have been, so I don't can't get inside their head. But the one thing, to, I, they all want to talk about Aaron Rodgers. So that's fine. Tori, these Packer fans don't even want to accept it. They seem to be traumatized by this situation. Everybody is. If you know, they don't even want to. The fans haven't even picked a side yet. They can't believe it's happening. Is it? You played there. Is is it that big a deal? Have I read it right? It, it is that big of a deal. Um, and what the NFL has done with the schedule is they're almost challenging Aaron Rodgers and and betting on him to be a Packer. Like you know what? We're gonna put these primetime games right here the first four weeks of the season. And, you know, I, I truly don't see Aaron giving in. You know, I, he's really upset with the organization because he hasn't had any input. And the only thing he wants is a couple players on offense. You know, give him the guys that he wants so he can go out and play at a high level. And if they're going to sit there and continue to kind of back him into this corner, um, he's going to come out swinging, but it's it's not going to be for the Packers. It's going to be for a different organization or it's going to be with him um, sitting at home and, and, and sitting this year out. Do you think that Love uh, has got much of a chance to step in and do something just like that if he's thrown to the wolves like it's going to be? And uh, I know they're all crazy about him down there. They had a great career at Utah and everything else. But he didn't do anything, of course, watching the sidelines this year. If he's going to be under a lot of pressure, if he gets a, gets a big chance to take that uh, job, and everybody wants him in, 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 in uh, Green Bay, I guess uh, it's got to be an awful situation, don't you think? Yeah, those are big shoes to fill. You know, you're you're filling a Hall of Famer, and on top of that, uh, Green Bay is used to winning. So <laughs> you were in the NFC Championship game, and they're going to expect you to pick up where you left off at, and that's unfair to the love. But to make matters even worse, uh, Green Bay went out and signed Blake Bortles, right. I think, yesterday as well, you know, the backup quarterback they used to play in Jacksonville. So now – you know, that le- that's an indictment on Jordan Love that he's not ready to play, that you have to bring in another veteran quarterback uh, just to kind of hold it in, hold it in a row because they don't believe in their first-round pick. And that just goes back to the beginning of, you know what, maybe you shouldn't have reached that high to grab him in the first place. You know, I felt like he easily could have been there. Um, they could have got a receiver in the first round, and then if they wanted to get uh, Jordan Love in the second round, so be it. But to trade up and get – love and he doesn't touch the field his first year and now all the pressure is on him it seemed like it's a recipe for disaster don in winnipeg wants to know your thoughts tory on the san francisco 49ers for 2021 i think it's going to be a big year for uh trey lance uh if if anybody remembers uh the washington football team when, when they were the redskins uh when they drafted rg3 uh, he was rookie of the year, and you know he reminds me of a. He's not as explosive as RG three, but he has the same skill set. And um, you know what they're saying is he's even smarter. So now having a mastermind like Kyle Shanahan um, drawing up plays for him, I, I think it could be a great year because you know two years ago the San Francisco 49ers were just in a Super Bowl. So now you you get almost that that same team back. But it's going to be a tough division. You know, that NFC West is extremely difficult when you have to play Russell Wilson, then the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, you have Matthew Stafford with the Rams, and then you have Kyler Murray with the Arizona Cardinals. So um, I'm going to be excited to watch and, and, and see how the Niners uh, uh, perform this year. Uh, yeah, he didn't even play last year. Uh, sorry, I'm going I'm, – <laughs> I'm looking at Blake Bortles here, by the way. The reason I'm bringing that up is – they're trying to find quarterbacks for the OTAs because they already expect Aaron's not going to be there. Sorry to uh, – you're talking about the 49ers. I'm looking up Blake Bortles' career. I mean, they're just looking for arms, Tori. That's it. <laughs> they can call – hey, it's time to call me and you. <laughs> or a small <laughs> fee, we'll do it. And we know. can do the show at the same time. <laughs> I know. Oh, what a dream that would be. Dupes was saying the quarterback <laughs> coaches are loving it because they're going to be reliving their glory days throwing at OTAs for the Packers. <laughs> What do you got, Lynch? Last uh, one. Listen, Tori, to, to Bortles was drafted pretty high by uh, the team in the NFL. He was supposed to look good, did for a couple of years, and all of a sudden it's just uh, collapsed, hasn't he? Yeah, it, you know, he had a great year, one year stat-wise, because they were getting their, like, brains beat in, so he was always playing from behind. But um, they had, the, Jacksonville had a great defensive year when they took New England to the AFC Championship game. And 
honestly, they should have won. You know, it was a few bad calls that end up going New England way. Uh, but, you know, Blake Boyles wasn't the, the cavalier in, in that team. You know, it really was led by Jalen Ramsey uh, when he was a, a Jaguar. And you had all the guys, Calais Campbell. And, you know, they were like they were called Saxonville at the time because they had the number one defense in the league. So um, but, you know, best of luck to those guys. And we'll see how it all shakes out up in uh, Green Bay. Hey, Tori, just as we let you go, we should uh, mention uh, home field advantage. Talk about what you're doing off the air, off the field right now, helping out young athletes, all the stuff that you'd like our viewers to know. Yes, sir. So Home Field Advantage is a company that Kim and I, we started up as uh, consulting with recruiting and literally from Power 5, Division One schools, Alabama, Georgia, Oregon, Tennessee, South Carolina, all the way to D2 and D3 schools that you never heard of. I help connect kids with coaches um, by me giving them an evaluation. And from there, uh, that's how we hit the ground running with recruiting. I actually go on a road with my kids. Uh, like in a few hours, I'm headed to, uh, I will be in New Jersey for the Rivals camp. I'm part of the staff that help rate players. Uh, if you ever look at things being a three-star, four-star, five-star, um, I'm part of that where I help those guys as well as I'm going to be out in uh, Los Angeles at the end of the month with Trevor Lawrence, an elite quarterback camp. That's through Adidas. So literally, uh, home field advantage is, is up and rolling. And uh, if you guys are interested, you can you can get to me uh, at ToryGurley.com or you can go to the link in all my social media bios and you'll see it. And if you have any uh, sons, nephews or grandkids who's trying to play college ball, you know, send them my way. I'd be happy to talk to them and give them some insight on how they can help themselves. Oh, Tori, I can't tell you how happy I am for you that it's just exploded, which does not surprise me, but I knew this was the dream and it's unfolding. I'm just so, uh, I'm just so proud. Hey, we'll let you go. You're a busy guy. Thanks for the time, man. No, thank you. I can't wait to see you guys, man. I got to bring TJ out there. We're going to get him on air on his first show. It's gonna, his first interview is going to be with Uncle Rod. Can't wait. Can't <laughs> wait. Thanks, Tori. My that. best. See you, bud. All right, you guys. Take care. We'll get him in here. We'll get us going to get a jersey for him. We'll be right back with a sports update and more. It's the RP Show you're watching on Game Plus Television, YouTube, and Facebook Live, and 24-hour sports radio for Suds Full Service Car Wash at rodpeterson.com. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. fast-paced world, we know you don't always have time to cook a nutritious meal. The Mad Greek and Moose Jaws got you covered with delicious takeout and delivery specials, even for large groups or occasions. Authentic Greek cuisine, pizza, ribs, and more, there's something for everyone to enjoy. Offering delivery and the takeout window is open to get your Greek to go. Family owned and operated, for more information and to view the online menu, visit themadgreekeatery.com. Bronco Plumbing and Heating, proudly serving Regina and surrounding area since 1978. We are excited to announce the new Bryant Furnace Trade and Allowance Program. If you have a working Bryant Furnace, 15 years old or less, you may be eligible to receive a new furnace at a discounted rate. If you'd like to take advantage of the Bryant Trade and Program or to hear how we can help improve your home, give us a call today at 306-781-2090. Direct West provides us with stats and analytics, and, and it's amazing for us to look and see that, you know, each year we're 10 to 20 percent higher on our Google Leads. It's great to see the success that our, our locations are having. The Direct West app gives us an opportunity to be in one place for people to find uh, any of our locations or our commodities. Without Direct West, we would have to be in multiple digital places. I would recommend Direct West. They're great to work with. Rockstar Supply Chain Solutions is Saskatchewan's only full-service supply chain company. 
strategic sourcing, PO creation, and order expediting, VMI and vending solutions, and free delivery are just a few of the supply chain services we provide. If your company needs it, Rockstar Supply Chain Solutions can get it for you. Price, quality, service, Rockstar Supply Chain Solution is helping Saskatchewan companies buy better. Some of the challenges we face with the CT technology that we have today is some of the deficiencies in around integration with some of our other systems. The addition of, of two new 40 simulators uh, within the programming of the Saskatchewan Cancer Agency is, is going to have significant impact on, on you know, the care we provide to the people of Saskatchewan. Capital GMC is your used car destination. We're overstocked and priced to move, so shop online or in-store to get the best deal on any one of our massive selection of certified pre-owned vehicles. Every certified vehicle includes the balance of manufacturer's warranty, 150 plus point inspection, roadside assistance and certified exchange privilege. So save the depreciation and buy pre-owned. Capital GMC is your used car destination at the corner of Rochdale and Pasqua in Regina. Did you know you can catch all the best moments from the show on all our social media platforms? Now, back to the studio with Rob. Hey, welcome back, everybody. It's the uh, RP Show Football Friday, and I'm just going to jump in with some comments from our viewers from Rod Monroe. That's producer Clark's dad. Once again, great interview with Tori. Uh, from Wayne in BC, I always enjoy Tori's takes on the NFL and football in general. Phil watching on YouTube says, Tori is a man on fire. Love it. Uh, yeah, I wasn't going to say don't put that one up, but whatevs. Two years ago, Tori wasn't doing anything, nor was I. And he called me from South Carolina and he said, what should I do with my life? And I said, uh, I think you need to just jump on the crowd, jump on the wave and go with the wave, Tori. I think you need to work for yourself and just strike out on your own because you got that kind of talent. So that's why I said I'm so proud of what he's doing. Lynch, look what all, all he's doing. Oh, that's he, great. He can barely keep up. That's right. In a that's time one, where... In, in two years, that's great. Well, it's less than two in years. Less than two years. What a year. And he, I mean, he's a great guy. Great personality. He talks well. And he knows the NFL inside out. He knows the CFL inside out. Big assets. He has the world by the tail. He sure does. Sports update. <clears throat> the week keeps getting better for forward Luke Henman, the 21-year-old uh, center who became the first player ever signed by the Seattle Kraken on Wednesday when he inked a three-year deal with the expansion NHL club, scored the winner last night as the Blainville Boisbriand Armada edged the Victoriaville Tigres 3-2 in Game 4 of their Q series. Henman's seventh playoff goal, even the best of five, set 2-2 and forced a deciding game five on Saturday night with the winner advancing to the third round of the Quebec Major Junior League playoffs. The winner of game five will face the Charlottetown Islanders, while in the other series, the Val d'Or Fader, I've never been able to say that, the Fader and Shakutami Saganin are set to square off in the other third round matchup. What are you laughing at? The names of that league are just kill you. I know, I know. but the thing with Valdor, <laughs> they beat us. I know. They the did. Regina Pats out in the semifinal. <laughs> well, I know all about it. I was there, so. That's stuff you don't ever get over, Lynch. No, you don't. I know you don't. Of course you don't. Elias Lindholm and Matthew Kachuk each had a goal and an assist for the Calgary Flames in a 4-1 win over the visiting Vancouver Canucks last night. Meanwhile, the Colorado Avalanche have claimed the President's Trophy as the NHL team with the best overall record, winning their final game of the regular season to overtake the Vegas Golden Knights. They smoked the Kings 5-1. Uh, Zach Levine scored 24 points, and the Chicago Bulls beat the short, uh, shorthanded Raptors 114-102 last night. And Braves outfielder Ronald Acuna Jr. will avoid the injured list after leaving an 8-4 loss against the Blue Jays with a left ankle injury yesterday. I don't know if you saw that or not. He twisted it on the first, uh, first base bag. Toronto, uh, by the way, rallied for its 10th come-from-behind win of the season after trailing 2 nothing. Are you getting on board with the Blue Jays, friends? Sure am. Lots of more How games. can you not? A lot of games. Saw that, uh, that injury, too. That Did was, you? Yeah. Okay. Happens all the time. Yeah. Could have been worse. This sports update for the Tap Brew House and Drive Through Liquor Store and for Red Bull Canada. Red Bull gives you wings. Couple minutes left only in this segment, and then we'll come back for viewer takeover. 
Uh, John, we, we talked a lot of NFL today. There were some CFL things you want to discuss. Well, I think locally, eh? Uh, I was, the, what, the vice president of uh, overall services? Football operations. Football operations, Pollock, Mr. Pollock, uh, left the football team, and he's going over to the Regina Golf Club as the manager of the Regina Golf Club. He's a very capable guy, top-notch guy, and it's um, tough the riders lose him because I thought he did a real good job with that team. He had several different capacities over his years there. Good guy to deal with. You could talk with him. Mm -hmm. Reasonable guy. Didn't get mad at you or anything. And... Uh, I figure that's a loss for the Rough Riders and a gain for the a gain for the Regina Golf Club. No doubt. Well, that's just that's why I was trying to tiptoe around it in the warm up. That Thursday was like a tipping point, and it's it's not like he just resigned yesterday. He's talking about the former PR guy, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, who became the head of football operations, resigned Thursday to become the general manager at the Royal Regina Golf Course, great place, and it just. That news out of Ontario that they have not cleared the CFL's return to play, just it took a lot of air out of people, John, I guess is oh, my point. The Both, final air. The yeah, final air that's left The in. final air, you thought? Yeah. It's, it just, uh, I know I saw it when I read it. You go, oh, close the paper up, close the off the TV and do something else. <laughs> you know, it's, it takes too much out of you following this. Your heart's in it. You want to see it all settled. Let's go. We're happy. We're going to be blamed by uh, August the 7th. I don't know if we are or not. I have no reason to believe we are. Uh, I can't see it happening, and that's what the Heritage Minister, Lisa McLeod, said. One comment before we break and come back from James Henderson in Manitoba. He says, having no football this summer is so depressing. It's obvious we are not going to have fans in the stands this year. I'm so angry. Uh, from Mick Panko, a good friend of mine, he works with the U of R Rams. He says, so glad to have Ryan on board. He's talking about the Ryan Pollock. He's a great dude. Will be a huge asset for the Royal Regina Golf Club. Can we talk about this when we come back? Are you a sports snob? Are you a football snob? Because you said there's no football this summer. I don't know. I've been watching Spring League. I, I know that I was in your basement last week watching Maritime Men's Football. <laughs> and we enjoyed the spank out of that. We sure did. So we'll be right back. Let's talk about that. Is there no football? You're watching the RP Show on Game Plus TV Network, YouTube and Facebook Live, and 24-hour sports talk for Suds Full Service Car Wash at rodpeterson.com. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. People donate blood for moments like this. But there are lots of reasons why Canada's lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or that donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. Or to help new moms and babies, like Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's lifeline. Direct West has been the bridge for me from not dealing with social media or digital presence to having a presence. You have to take the leap of faith, so to say, and I'm glad we have. Direct West has helped us out immensely to get our presence online as far as digitally and also with the social media page. To see the results is just, uh, just puts a smile on your face. <laughs> Is it time to take your event online? Bring it to IKS Live. We've got a fully customized virtual event platform with remote guest support for your next fundraiser, talk show, conference, performance, and more. IKS Live offers live streaming to Facebook Live and YouTube and pre-recorded capabilities, both in our studio with green screen available and on location with pre-production and post-production services. IKS Live, the proud producer of The Rod Peterson Show and The Recovery Hour. Visit us at ikslive.ca. Bronco Plumbing and Heating, proudly serving Regina and surrounding areas since 1978. We are excited to announce the new Bryant Furnace Trade-In Allowance Program. 
If you have a working Bryant furnace, 15 years old or less, you may be eligible to receive a new furnace at a discounted rate. If you'd like to take advantage of the Bryant Trade-In Program, or to hear how we can help improve your home, give us a call today at 306-781-2090. At Prairie Mobile, you can get the phone you want when you want. All smartphones are $0 every day. With convenient locations across Saskatchewan, Prairie Mobile, your Sastel authorized dealer, has you covered. Visit us online at prairiemobile.com. Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes to our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard, and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. Hey, Rod Squad, now you can join the team with your very own RP Show gear. Head to rodpetersonshop.com and get yours today while supplies last. It's just like we wear on the show, official RP Show gear at rodpetersonshop.com. Send us your opinions now. We won't victimize you unless you really deserve it. Now, back to your host, Rod Peterson. Welcome back, everybody. It's a football Friday, and uh, hey, we navigated the crisis. We have the best tech team in show business. I guess Facebook went down, but we were still live on Game Plus Television across North America and YouTube, but we're back up on Facebook. I don't know. I just sit here and talk. Just before some of the news, and, and Lynch says he wants to talk more about Tim Tebow, obviously. We'll carry that over into hour two, John. Yep. we got more time for that. But there is something that we're launching today on the show. The University of Regina Rams are launching their online 50-50 today. It's now open to all of the province here of Saskatchewan to people aged 19 and over. They will draw for the winner on June 18th. The University of Regina Rams football program continues to be self-funded through fundraising efforts and sponsorship, honoring all 2021 scholarships to 95 student athletes and equipping them with new equipment year over year. Visit ReginaRams5050.com for more information and to purchase your tickets. Province-wide, you're sitting on a whack of dough that you haven't spent for the last year. Can you please help out? Uh, a tremendous partner of ours, the University of Regina Rams football program. Um, I guess while we're at it, some CFL news today. Uh, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers have signed 2021 CFL draft picks Redha Cramdy and Robbie Lowe's linebacker whom they took in the fourth round, 34th overall. Cramdy comes from the University of Montreal, and it, the news release says has been able to carve out a role for himself on both defense and special teams during his time with Academy. And as for Robbie Lowe's, we mentioned him off the top of the show, started all eight Canada West games in 2019 for the Rams, finished third on the team with a total of 35 tackles and added an interception, a fumble recovery, two forced fumbles and two blocked uh, kicks. I've known him since he was just a wee lad, and that's exciting news. Speaking of Winnipeg, tonight it's the Jets and the Leafs, and John, I wanted to mention this. Jets coach Paul Maurice speaking today to the media on tonight's final game of the regular season. Here's the quote. There is almost, this is going to sound terrible for hockey, a gentleman's agreement. I don't think you're going to see any late hits. Both teams are getting ready. There will be a certain amount of respect on the ice. Surprising he says that. <laughs> well, that's, that's Pomo. He's an oh, honest guy. I like I, the guy. But nice here's guy. the thing. Last night I want to tune in the Kings and the Avalanche. And I put on Sportsnet and I'm like, ew, Flames, Canucks, the friends and family game. Nobody wants to watch this. So thank God I had center ice through access yeah. communications, and I had the NHL game between the Kings and the Avs. Anyways, all that's going on. You wanted to talk about Tim Tebow. What do you got? Well, Tim Tebow was his quarterback. Tim Tebow was his, uh, Myers' quarterback when he was at uh, Florida, when he was national champion, eh? Yep. So I think he feels he owes him something. He couldn't make it as a quarterback. He's getting a second chance. The thing is, he hasn't played football for nine years. It's too late. Uh, he's got to re or Meyer's got to realize that he loved the guy. He was wonderful there, but he can't make it in the NFL. You want to give him another chance, change positions. I don't think he's a tight end. He's not a quarterback. He should just do something else. And uh, 
I don't know. It's going to be an awkward situation if he tries to force that guy onto the team and change position with other guys. He's not a tight end. They've got a tight end, a pretty good one, too. So I see Meyer doing some of the things he did in college when he finally fi- got fired in, in a couple of situations. So I hope he doesn't do that. Well, this is a PR stunt. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's, that's, all, that's all that it is. Yeah. Uh, Tebow's the Jacksonville guy signing with the Jaguars. Come on, for anybody to think that it's anything but, uh, they're mis- they're, they're, uh, been misled. Les Zeller writing us on the Prairie Mobile text line. I'll be fast. He says, I respect Arash Madani and love to hear his opinions. He's the Don Cherry of the CFL. I saw his interview on the XFL Markcast and agree, a merger with the XFL has risks. The expansion days of the 90s were like shacking up with the girlfriend. Everyone went back home when it didn't work. This would be more of a marriage, something that would be harder to walk away from. <laughs> That's from uh, Les Zeller. Okay, next hour we got Jarrett Bush, former Calgary Stampeder and Green Bay Packer, and more of all of this. Stick around after the break here on Game Plus. Head to YouTube.com slash The Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes through our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. Bronco Plumbing and Heating, proudly serving Regina and surrounding areas since 1978. We are excited to announce the new Bryant Furnace Trade-In Allowance Program. If you have a working Bryant Furnace, 15 years old or less, you may be eligible to receive a new furnace at a discounted rate. If you'd like to take advantage of the Bryant Trade-In Program or to hear how we can help improve your home, give us a call today at 306-781-2090. At Prairie Mobile, you can get the phone you want when you want. All smartphones are $0 every day. With convenient locations across Saskatchewan, Prairie Mobile, your Sastel authorized dealer, has you covered. Visit us online at prairiemobile.com. Is it time to take your event online? Bring it to IKS Live. We've got a fully customized virtual event platform with remote guest support for your next fundraiser, talk show, conference, performance, and more. IKS Live offers live streaming to Facebook Live and YouTube and pre-recorded capabilities, both in our studio with green screen available and on location with pre-production and post-production services. IKS Live, the proud producer of The Rod Peterson Show and The Recovery Hour. Visit us at ikslive.ca. In today's fast-paced world, we know you don't always have time to cook a nutritious meal. The Mad Greek and Moose Jaws got you covered with delicious takeout and delivery specials, even for large groups or occasions. Authentic Greek cuisine, pizza, ribs, and more, there's something for everyone to enjoy. Offering delivery and the takeout window is open to get your Greek to go. Family owned and operated, for more information and to view the online menu, visit themadgreekeatery.com. People donate blood for moments like this. But there are lots of reasons why Canada's lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or that donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. Or to help new moms and babies, like Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's lifeline. Business owners and marketers. Okay, we know you think we're pretty cool. That's why we want you to share in the coolness factor. Partner with The Rod Peterson Show and market your business every weekday to sports lovers just like yourself. Take advantage of our many cost-effective commercial and promotional opportunities. Tell the world about your business. Yes, the world. Thanks to Game Plus TV and The Rod Peterson Digital Network. Contact us today and find out how you can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show, The Rod Peterson Show.
No. They talk about the Cowboys every day. You understand there's 31 other NFL teams. How many Major League Baseball teams are there? 30? 32 NHL teams. They only talk about the Cowboys. How about that? They're America's team. And by the way, it's all just marketing. Have you watched the documentary on America's team or the football life? It was just marketing. It was the late 70s. But the football guys didn't like it. This is the Rod Peterson Show. It absolutely is, and welcome uh, to Hour 2, everybody. It's the second half kickoff. No real reason for me ringing the bell other than it's just been a great day. i got my good buddy John Frenzy with me here, and a lot of things to talk about on this Football Friday. NFL, CFL, Spring League, indoor. Um, don't mind me, John. As, as we you heard near the end of Hour 1, we had some significant Facebook issues, so I'm just sharing it again to our viewers, and I hope we, ah, whatever, I'm done with that. These guys will figure it out. Facebook's being jerks today, but we're still live on Game Plus Television and uh, YouTube and listen live. Uh, William May writes in, he says, does the CFL think they can keep everyone in the dark? This isn't the 60s anymore. We live in an information world and they need to change or they will be pounding sand. My dude, we're 15 months into this thing and the CFL hasn't changed much. And um, I'm not really interested in going much further, more down that road other than to say where there's a will, there's a way. And what's being proven is there just isn't a will. Um. Enough said? So, Frenzy, he's my special guest here. He is, in fact, the Don Cherry of football. So let's talk about this for a minute. With regard, and I said we were going to, being a football snob, right? I was talking to Lynch about, what league was I talking? The Spring League? Yeah. Remember? And you're like, what's that? <laughs> it right. must be inferior football. And I well, said, Lynch, I'm going to come over to your house, and we're going to watch it together. And then we're going to watch the Maritime Football League last Saturday live with Darren Burns playing, right? That 57-year-old making history. Lynch, would you take it away with the afternoon that you and I had in your South Palatial South Regina State last week. We had a great time, and with a, beside the, the kitty jumping all over us, but uh, <laughs> it was a great game. We thought it was a real good game down there, a, a classic uh, grinded out game, an offensive line, defensive line going against each other. They played very well, really. Better, the passing was pretty good for the most part, on one side. Uh, it was exciting. It was good to watch. Fans were there cheering. I didn't realize that league existed. I don't know if anybody <laughs> in Canada did. And we gave it a, a real good shot, I thought, and. Uh, they're good football players, and our guest was a star on the defensive line, big guy. He's 57 years old, playing right defensive tackle. So whether you should do it or not, he's out there doing it, but why can't you do it? Okay? I know. Well, you can, and you can watch football that's not necessarily what uh, maybe you don't know who the guys are. That's why I don't really have an opinion here because – I'll watch cartoon football. I'll watch any level of hockey. I learned that, by the way, from my dad who – Graduated same year as you, Lynch. What year was that? 1955? 56. 1956? Yeah. Luther College. And my dad, who worked in the NHL for 26 years, had just as much love to go watch the local peewee team in our little town. He would. Yeah. Than to fly to Dallas to watch the Stars for whom he worked. Yep. He didn't care. It's, it's about the game. But that's rare. That's very rare, and I learned that from him. And my point is, I'll send a, spend a Saturday afternoon watching six hours of Spring League football on Fox and thoroughly enjoy it. Those we, guys were in shape. We watched, that well, out. they were, but hang on. With the Spring League? Those no, guys are our, pros. Our, our guys right there. But the guys we watched last Sunday the, were, were in shape. There was no big fatties. That was the senior the league, senior, but and no, they were in shape too. Yeah, but there was no big fatties or anything like that. No. So, but the thing is, here's the thing. We're watching the Moncton Mustangs play the Fredericton fleet and it was pretty good. It was week one. It was pouring rain and it was cold in Moncton for the game. And the timing was good. The quality of play was, there was a lot of turnovers, but whatever. That's the NFL does that in the bad conditions. But then I said, John, now we're watching on my iPad. And I said, let's put it up on the big screen. Let's watch the spring league. Remember what you said about that? No. Nope. <laughs> you were like, these guys are ballers. It was very quick and slick play. Oh, yeah, that game, yeah. was really good, yeah. But if we didn't know who that Moncton game was, if we were just dropped somewhere and watched that game, and somebody said, this is the Green Bay Packers working out, you would have believed it. Because For there was no fatty guys. Those guys were all in shape. 
They knew what they were doing. No Rudy Poos. And there wasn't a lot of offsides or anything. Not a lot of penalties. <laughs> uh, uh, they played real well. They didn't throw the ball around that much, but that's out of necessity, really, because it was raining, and they all didn't, they hadn't uh, been that familiar with their receivers, both teams. So I was impressed with it, and I was prepared to be... Uh, not impressed. Not impressed or critical and snotty. But that's my point. Why do you... Not you, but why do... People feel they have to watch the CFL or they have to watch the NFL because the CFL is inferior to the NFL. It's football. Just watch it. I think you'll enjoy it. I know I did. But from the viewers, because this is the second half kickoff, and we'd like to involve our viewers here. And by the way, coming up this hour, Jarrett Bush, former Calgary Stampeder, but also a Super Bowl champion with the Green Bay Packers. That's coming up next segment. But Armando Moreno, our Mexican reporter watching right now in Mexico City, Says the spring league is pretty good football. It is. Why don't you just try it out? It reminds me of the Saskatchewan Rush or the Saskatchewan Rattlers pro teams who said, Rod, just come on up. Come on up. Give us a watch. You know, we'll put you on the sidelines. That didn't hurt. But it was, I got hooked immediately. Just try it. From our viewers. <laughs> From the Puck and Pigskin podcast in Red Deer. Says, quote, no big fatties. Oh, man, frenzy. <laughs> well, what do you want to call him? What do you want to? Come on. Truth hurts. <laughs> what do you want to call him? Buddy? From the CFL Sim 2020, the difference between the CFL and the NFL and keeping people in the dark is the media takes speculation and runs with it for three hours on get up every day. The NFL doesn't have to say a word. That's a topic for another day. It just infuriated me. It, it flat out infuriated me that, because I spent so much time in America pre-pandemic that it was all, it was NFL 24-7. I said to Lynch in the car on the way up. And now I had to get ESPN put into my house because that's how much I want it here in Canada. And it's all NFL. I don't even watch the NFL network anymore. I don't have to. ESPN's got it. And the CFL did, didn't want to be talked about. I'm not joking. I'll say it again. The CFL did not want to be talked about in the offseason. It wasn't a rumor. It was pounded into my head by the CFL. Well, they were in meetings for, we thought, the whole month of November, and we thought that something big would come out of that meeting, and it didn't. <laughs> Listen, I said I don't want to do this, and that's talk about the CFL because I can't say anything nice. So that's why I've been trying to move over to the NFL. For years, as the voice of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, I was trying to cover these winter meetings, league meetings, governor's meetings, this and that. And it was, would you, they said, would you leave us alone? You're annoying us. Quit trying to cover these meetings. Well, they're not. I'm like, <laughs> uh, you know, a, a media-oriented network. Our understanding of the media. Don't have an understanding. They don't even, even have an understanding. And it's not just... The CFL, what did I say last hour? Somebody said that John, we talked about John Tortorella, and I said John Tortorella just doesn't have an appreciation or respect of the job that the media has to do. No. It's a two-way street. The media doesn't have much respect for what the coach has to do. No. I get that, but I get the jobs of the people in sports and the media, but I'm rare. Um, from Tank Abbott, watching in the energy capital, he says the NFL is a finely tuned marketing machine the CFL wants to be, but hasn't put in the work and expects it to just happen. Yeah. We have a winner. That's a pretty good Tell statement. Tell him what he's won, Bob. Pretty good statement, Bob. Tom. Tank. From uh, Kevin Olenek, watching in Vancouver, British Columbia. Ontario has announced all outdoor events canceled until Labor Day. What? I'll say it again. Ontario has announced all outdoor events canceled until Labor Day. That just now? Apparently. <laughs> oh, God. Well, folks, what can I say? That's it. Time to talk hockey. <laughs> How about that? I don't know. How about when he's saying it, we got a problem. Man, that's If you're funny. the CFL. Oh. Write that down. For the clip of the day. Uh, all outdoor events canceled to what? Labor Day. Yeah. Well, I was reading. Actually, I could, I could call it up here right now. I was reading a news uh, story this morning. It's a long story why I got it, but I'm paying a healthy fee 
for a Canadian press subscription, because it's, I told them it's the only news that I trust, John. I know. And here it is. A guy, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but this is just the news. I don't want anybody's opinion. I don't want people calling Doug Ford a clown. That's what you think, but I want the news. I want what's actually going on, okay? And I'll make my own assumptions from there. From the Canadian press, the Ontario government wants to vaccinate all willing adults against COVID-19 by mid-September. But experts say that won't happen without increased clarity and collaboration. University of Toronto epidemiologist Ashley Toot says the government should clarify its plan for second doses given the confusing piecemeal vaccination campaign thus far. Oh, that's for sure. The president of the Ontario Medical Association says she is fully on board with the province's plan for a two-dose summer. But it's mid-September now they're talking about vaccinating Ontarians where three CFL teams currently reside. And so this is the actual news. It's not opinion, okay? That's why I'm saying you want to talk about Lisa McLeod, the heritage minister. People are calling her a moron yesterday and a dummy. I'm like, who's the dummy? What she look like? Saying things like that. Why does it matter? <laughs> From CFL Sim 2020 on YouTube, ugh, you literally could see Frenzy's heart break in that moment for the CFL. Oh, man, that's just, that's just too much. Oh, man. I can't believe this. From I, I Wayne. Mean, they're too early. I mean, that, this is I'm, I'm, We can't stop. Wayne in Victoria. He's been chiming in with a lot of comments, and most of them I've let go by, but here's one. He says, the powers in be that be in government don't care about sports at all. This is just dawning on you, people. This is just dawning on you. And nothing against you, Wayne. But I would hope that we turned the corner sometime months ago that, this, that the government cares about the health of the people. That is their job. And the sports is not necessarily a priority unless you can find a way to play safely. And let's see who did. The National Hockey League, Curling Canada, the Western Hockey League, the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League, the Canadian Premier League, the Canadian Elite Basketball League, all leagues that have played in Canada in the last year. If you find a way to play safely and you want to write the tab, go nuts. So, sorry, it just triggered me a little bit there. The powers that be in government don't care about sports at all. Even that's wrong because... Provincially here, the government's been writing checks to the sports organizations that haven't played to just cover, to cover it. So I can't even go along with that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Backward step. That's a part of the bottom. So backward. Wow, it just, it just, it, it, I'm, I'm upset if you haven't, if people haven't learned something in the last 15 months. If you haven't learned something, what have you been doing for the last 15 months as a person? Either getting better or getting worse. Um, from uh, Live 2 Question, watching on YouTube, says the most I ever hear about the CFL is from the Rod Peterson Show. Honestly, they should be thanking you for marketing them. <laughs> that's really true, boy. That's a real good statement, strong. He says, that's the sad part. You say the CFL doesn't want to be talked about, yet you're probably the best marketing tool at the moment with 3 downnation.com. Marketing for a big sports team can't be that hard. You wouldn't think. <laughs> you wouldn't. It, 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 it takes hard work, but it should be fun. But anyways, I said I don't want to talk about this. The poll question today is, will we ever see Aaron Rodgers again in a Green Bay Packers uniform? And it's for Capital Automall Universal Collision Center. 65% of respondents saying, no, we won't. We will never see Aaron Rodgers play again. And you're wondering, why are we talking about that? Because this morning on ESPN, where they cover the leagues that are playing, they're saying Aaron Rodgers may very well now sit out the 2021 season for the Green Bay Packers, which, John, is unthinkable. Unthinkable. A man of that As talent. As a Packers fan. A man of that talent. I mean, he's such a talented guy. Uh, it would be incredible if that happened. It would be unthinkable that the league would let that happen. But uh, I just, I don't know. I wonder about presidents of teams. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what they think. They get personal about it. And you can't do that. You can't get personal. You got to look at what's on the field, what the fans are. You got to look at those fans. The stands are filled. 
People love the game. You can't hurt it for them. You can't take it away from them. Well, I'll tell you what's happened uh, in sports over, and we, we've seen it over the last several decades, is the money has, in fact, ruined it. Money brings out the worst in people. It's the root of all evil, and it's made everybody be in it for themselves. Yep. I didn't want to be, but I am now because everybody else is in sports. Aaron Rodgers is doing what's best for Aaron Rodgers, and the Green Bay Packers are doing what's best for the Green Bay Packers, but it's and, it's, and it's an insolvable impasse. Yep. But That's where they're at. There should you be can't blame either side. What is done for the fans. Six, you know 80,000 fans in Green Bay. 60,000 season ticket holders. I mean, come on. Oh, my God. You can't do this. I'm telling you, Mark Murphy, you're going to find yourself in a very unpopular situation walking down the street. Uh, here's one. Before we break and we bring in Jared Bush, I'm excited for that. He says, the Canadian Football League seems to market like the Alliance of the American Football League. We had a team in Salt Lake City, and most of the 1.5 million in the greater Salt Lake area had no idea they existed. But the Alliance of American Football lasted one season. Yeah. The Canadian Football League's been around for 100 years. 108? This would have been the 108th Grey Cup last year? Yeah. I can't even remember anymore. Yeah. So the Alliance had its problems, but it was a fledgling league. Yeah, and they, they probably didn't have the money to market. No. You know, so anyways, do we have Jarrett? Okay, we're going to take a break. This has been a very spicy second half kickoff. Thank you, Frenzy, for that. It's going by today fast, eh? It sure is. Great show always is. Oh, yeah. I got to say, from Corey DeTavio watching in Manitoba, he says, looking svelte, Roddy. Down 21 pounds on the pink drink. You didn't even notice, John. Oh, I did so. You didn't say anything. I said it last, last one you were in our house last week. <laughs> I, maybe you did. <laughs> we'll be right back. You're watching the RP Show Football Friday on Game Plus Television, YouTube and Facebook Live, and 24-hour sports radio for Suds Full Service Car Wash at rodpeterson.com. Head to YouTube.com slash The Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. Introducing Original 16 Hard Seltzer. The refreshing taste of lemon and Saskatoon berry with vodka made in Saskatchewan. New hard seltzers from Original 16. Capital Ford Lincoln is Truck Nation. Looking to buy your next truck or sell your current one? Capital is Canada's truck destination. Shop online or in store to see the new 2021 Ford F 150, Ranger, Escape, and more. Right now is the best time to lease or finance a new vehicle. Can't find exactly what you're looking for? Let us help by sourcing your vehicle from our dealer network or custom ordering one that is perfect for you. Capital Ford Lincoln is Truck Nation, 1201 Pasqua Street North in Regina. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. EDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Some of the challenges we face with the CT technology that we have today is some of the deficiencies in around integration with some of our other systems. The addition of, of two new 40 simulators uh, within the programming of the Saskatchewan Cancer Agency is, is going to have significant impact on, on you know, the care we provide to the people of Saskatchewan. We started Suds Car Wash in 2003. 
There's a bit of us in every part of the business. I've been working here since I was about 10 years old. Hard to believe it's been 12 years since. Our parents always taught us about the importance of quality of work and friendly service. And here at Saskarish, we're a family-run business, so it's really important that our customers feel like family. From all of us at Suds Car Wash, we make your car shine. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Oh yeah, he's back. Time for more of the Rod Peterson Show. All right, welcome back everybody. It is a football Friday here on Game Plus Television. RP Show, John Frenzy is with me, the Hall of Fame Saskatchewan Rough Riders broadcaster. And what an absolute treat we have for you today. And just before we bring him on the screen, guys, Jared Bush played nine seasons with the Green Bay Packers, but two with the Calgary Stampeders 2016-2017. So everybody in Calgary... Get up, stand up. Let's get some questions for Jarrett Bush today, who joins us from Wisconsin on this football Friday. There he is, Jarrett. How you doing, my man? Whoa. Doing somebody, well. Glad to be here. Somebody's not well. doing well. <laughs> no, we're good. I just got, I got my kids here. Be, but, uh, we should be good to go. How you guys hey, doing? Hey, we're, we're, are you kidding me? We're talking football and getting paid to do it. What, what's better? You know how that is. <laughs> Nothing better. Oh, yeah, hey. definitely, definitely. Thanks for, thanks for having me. Listen, we got a lot of questions for you, and, and some include the Canadian Football League, Jared. But listen, can you please, let's talk about the elephant in the room that is Aaron Rodgers. What's the town going through mm. right now? The state. What, <laughs> la latest I heard today is that he might not play this year. He might hold out. What are you thinking? No, I think he's going to play. I think he, you know, playing uh, football with a Green Bay legendary team, I think it's something to be said and to understand that his legacy is definitely riding on a lot right now. I think, and I think there's definitely a lot of components and variables that may hinder having him having a good, a great season. Uh, I, th I definitely feel this having a conversation with some of the front, front office people and understanding and building off some of the commonalities and similarities. Hey, Hey, you know, we all want to win a championship at the end of the day. How can we build off that conversation and kind of get to our differences? And how can we, how can we come, come together and, still have a collective effort of winning Super Bowl. I think that's how you start that conversation. I understand there's some uh, some other you know aspects of maybe like ego, personalities clashing, but at the end of the day, everybody wants to play football. He's one of the best NFL quarterbacks, you know, to ever step on the, on the gridiron. Uh, a good friend of mine, um, knowing his true character and who he is and a true competitor, I definitely feel that he, he, has a, he has a tremendous upside and he definitely wants to cap and solidify his legacy with a great legendary uh, football team, the Green Bay Packers. And I think that's, at the end of the day, he wants to uh, maintain and continue just to uh, have a great relationship with, with the Packers, with not only the community of Green Bay, but as well as the, the, the administration organization. Well, I'll tell you what, you mentioned egos. And if we're sitting here waiting for one side to blink and swallow their pride, we're going to be waiting a long time. But, you know, I assume you're on the player's side, Jared. Let's just think about the Packers' side for a second. And that is, yeah. we were in the conference championship game last year. We've given you talent, Aaron. Like, what am I missing on that side? Like, I don't think the team's going to say that they've done anything wrong in their mind. Right, I agree. I definitely feel A-Rod needs to play football. He needs to concentrate on being the best quarterback he can be and be being the best teammate that he can be possible. And I think that's, his going, that's going to be his commitment, his sole commitment. I, I, I feel that he will do that. I think he just needs to know that in the front office that they're doing everything they can in the front office to make sure that he has the tools and the things that he needs to do to, to, uh, or just the pieces around him to make sure that he has everything and all the weapons on the football field. I think that's where they're miscommunicating and there's some lack of understanding there. Uh, because at the end of the day, a is on that football field, you know, the front office, they're not standing on the, on the gridiron. They're sitting on the sidelines. And I think there's different opinions, different personalities and, uh, 
again, just different uh, different opinions and values and positions. Obviously, it seems like um, I think A. Rod's pushing for receivers. I would imagine this being as a pass happy pass heavy quarterback and um, just wanting more weapons out there. I remember when I was in 2000, 2009, 2010, we definitely had from from top to bottom we had Greg, Jordy, Don Driver, James Jones, Jeremiah Finley, and I think we're missing one other, Randall Cobb. That one, right? Randall Cobb. So it was like pick your poison, pick your huh. poison. We had weapons, you know, and so I think he's just trying to get back to that. And he remembers, he watches film, right, of those Super Bowl days. And he's like, man, like, why, you know, why, why can't we have that, that arsenal again? And I think that's what his desire is. And, uh, that's why I think he sees Tom Brady. He sees Tom Brady, how he goes to Tampa Bay. He, he brings in his pieces, and he wins the Super Bowl his first year. And that's tough. That's tough to watch. You know, A-Rod wants to win, and he just, he just sees the blueprint. He's like, man, if he can do it, why can't I? That seemed to be the tipping point as to when Aaron got upset. By the way, your daughter, you don't, you, you don't see it. She's walking behind you and just giving a little like the, I don't know, did you tell her that you're on national television today? She wants to be a star. So before we say goodbye, you got to put her on camera here for us. Sean, John, come here. Yeah, okay, on, let's God. do it. Let's do it. Can she hear us? Probably Selena, not. Selena, come here. <laughs> oh, well, hello, TV. darling. How are you? <laughs> I smile. Good. Hi. Hey, who's your favorite football team? Uh, Green Bay Packers. Yeah. Who's your Who's your favorite player? Uh, my dad. Oh, <laughs> there we my go. Girl, that's my girl. Girl. Oh, you got another one there too. Oh yeah, no kidding. Oh, yeah. Well, let's say hi. Who else we got? Yeah. You want to say hi? What's your sister's no. name? Okay. No. Mia. No. Mia, and what's your name? Selena. How do you say that? Say it again. Say it. Delena. Delena? Selena. Oh, okay. Selena. Yeah. Okay, Daddy's got a deeper yeah. voice. I could Selena. I got it. And Mia. Okay, <laughs> girls. Well, thanks for, yeah. for coming on TV uh, with us, and thanks for sharing your dad with us for a few minutes. All right. Can I get some more time with, with Clark? <laughs> she <laughs> she doesn't want to leave. She likes <laughs> it. <laughs> he didn't want to leave. Right. Jared, okay. thank you. <laughs> Jared, John Lynch over here. Uh, I got to look at this thing. It's a very sad situation with the Packers. But the guy at the top is Mark Murphy. He's the president of the stamp of the uh, Packers. He shouldn't have allowed this mm-hmm. to happen. They should have included, don't you think they should have included, uh, or at an earlier stage in this, uh, uh, Aaron and all the big decisions were made players-wise and discuss with, him, discuss with him what he thought. Do they need another wide receiver? Do they need another running back? Do they need another defensive end? He didn't get involved like other people in big sports have. And I think... Uh, Brady gets involved definitely with the Buccaneers. He said that. So you're I'm asking not, how this could have been avoided. How basically. could it, how could it have been <laughs> yeah. avoided? How yeah. could it have been avoided? Is, is is Mark Thompson to blame, or Mark Murphy? Mike Murphy to blame to some Mark degree. Murphy. I honestly feel that good comes from he pulls he pulls the trigger on the players and who who the players what players come into the. To, to the organization. I think Mark Murphy handles more of the business and admi- administration aspects of it. Um, like players, um, like the Green Bay community, like stock sales, you know, um, commissions, tickets, things like that. I'm not sure if he has too much of a say so on what players are being brought in. I definitely feel like he could have mediated the conversation in the understanding like, hey, okay, these, these two of my very highly highly valued employees. We need to come in and sit down and have a cup, cup of coffee, have, you know, have a drink and come and find some commonality and find, and find some similarities again and just have a conversation. How can we work out our differences? Where do we see eye to eye? Where do we see our differences? And kind of go from there. I, I think really, yes, I, I think there's other people besides Mark Murphy that could help mediate it, that situation. So I don't, I would never, I wouldn't, Nevertheless, uh, point the finger at Mark Murphy. I think it's really on Aaron and Gutekunst. I feel like you're, you're if you got two personalities clashing, you guys got to talk it out. Talk it out like real men. Hash it out. You know, if if it's not going, it may not be one conversation. It might be multiple conversations that you might may need to have with them. And so I think just building that that relationship is, is definitely going to be huge. And at the end of the day, they both want to win. They have to be able to sit down. But hey, we want to win. So how can we find that? 
those little details and find, find those little small intricacies to make our team, the franchise, a winning franchise, just like it, just like we did in 2010. You guys, were, we were right there in this championship. We're top four. All we got to do is get, get over the hump. Yeah, no kidding. Again, I can't, I can't just pick point the finger at one person. I think it, it comes down to, again, the two clashers, right? The, the two personalities are clashing. Like, you really got to have a conversation. And, and also, uh, and Matt LaFleur. Kind of go from there. Matt LaFleur with, I believe, electing to kick a field goal late, right, and taking the offense off the field in that championship game. You let them go for a touchdown. We might even not even be having this conversation. But from our viewers, Chris Bird in Toronto says, family show is awesome. Jennifer says, that child raised right. Go Packers. Uh, so they, everybody loves seeing your kids there, Jared. I want to just switch this. Go ahead. One more. Troy in Toronto says, Rod, please stop with the Rogers coverage. You're going to make me cry. <laughs> I am going to stop. He's obviously a big Packers fan. But to the CFL time, Jarrett, a couple of years with the Calgary Stampeders, and I was looking this up, hoping that I might have called your games because I was with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders for 20 seasons calling their games. But you played against Ottawa in your appearances, so I didn't, I didn't call your games. But I did. What, yeah, what do you recall about the, your experience with the Calgary Stampeders? I thought it was a great experience. I mean, just traveling to the city of Ottawa and um, understanding like the different cultures and the French aspects, um, just outside of football. But inside of football, it was very much the same. Uh, but it, as well as like just seeing the different um, ways that the CFL does things, from the procedures from the up to start a game up to the kickoff. Again, the national anthem was de- definitely to experience. Right in the NFL, you definitely hear the American national anthem, and then hearing the Canadian national anthem over a numer- numerous years of growing up in your childhood and um, just recognizing that you're in a different country and you're playing football for a different country. It's pretty cool. Yeah, and no. uh, just under, again, the, the different intricacies of uh, the movements and the motions and everything else. Uh, but I mean, at the end of the day, it's black, it's blocking, tackling, catching, <laughs> you know, and throwing the football at the end of the day. So I had a great experience and uh, I wouldn't take it back, take it back for the world. And, uh, you know, met a lot of great people on both sides of the ball at Ottawa and in Calgary. So, um, I definitely recommend to anybody who's uh, seeking to play football for either, either, either team. It's unbelievably special, but I can just imagine this, that you're like most Americans in that Ottawa stadium, looking down the same sideline going, they're on the same side as us. Had you ever seen that before? Both teams on the same sideline. That is, seems like a yeah, Canadian thing was, to me. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a little different. Um, but at the same time, I mean, it seemed like, it was like almost like a scrimmage, but still in the game day atmosphere. Uh, but I don't think that that threw me off any bit. It was just hard because you couldn't you couldn't read any some of the signals or the personnel's going in things like that. I think that's a little different. But other than that, you know, it, it didn't really change too many dynamics in the in the football aspects of uh, just trying to win the football game. Yeah, and here's one: you would have taken a lot of awesome. you would have did it go off? He gone. It's a sign from God. I was just, I was just about to ask him about Bo Levi. While he's logging, that, and that's why I think it's a sign from God. Don't ask him about Bo Levi. <laughs> but Jeff the Stamps fan says, I, I, I hate to say this and mean no disrespect, but I have no recollection of Jarrett Bush. Jeff, I think that says more about you than it does about Jarrett. Yeah. You might want to check your fandom, your fan card. I really think you should. I, th- I thought you were Mr. Everything Stampeders. And you're admitting you don't remember Jared Bush. And here's the question. I don't know if we're going to get him back or not. And I assume, uh, Jared, and I'm not, I'm assuming, Lynch, you got to leave here right away. Yep. So somebody said to me the other day, if the CFL folds, Bo Levi will just sign a contract as a backup in the NFL and he'll be fine. And that's very possible. Do yeah, you think that is. could happen? Yeah. Sure. And what do you get? Five hundred thousand? No. Yeah, at least. At least basic five hundred thousand to go to the NFL. Yeah. Yep. The quarterbacks we have here are good guys, like our guy here, Cody, uh, and uh, and Calgary. Uh, uh, Riley won't go, I think, and try to get another job in BC because he's thirty-eight years old. So that'll be it for him. But uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Three or four of the quarterbacks will try to make it in the NFL, and I think they could. Minimum salary. In 2021, in the National Football League, which is what Bo Levi would be looking at, do you want to take a guess? 
Four hundred and eighty dollars. Six hundred and sixty thousand dollars. Wow. Six hundred and sixty thousand dollars U.S. money. Wow. I want to hear some great news coming out of the CFL. That's what I want. The thing that's going to turn me on, make me really happy, is some real good news from the CFL. Can we have that, please, Mr. Uh, Ambrosi? Uh, one before we let you go. From Jeff, the Stamps fan, I'm sure you can remember every rider that came through Regina, Rod. Yes, that was my job. I can. We have 90 seconds, Jared. Here's my question. Bo Levi Mitchell, you took a lot of reps against him in practice. People are saying if the CFL folds, Bo, Bo Levi will just sign in the NFL as a backup. Could it happen, do you think? Could he fit? Could he even start in the National Football League? You know the guy. You played against him in practice. That's a really good question. I think anybody given the opportunity can start in the NFL. And I, I feel like Bo Levi just given a shot and an opportunity to to play at that level and to kind of just digest that that offensive scheme can play. I definitely feel like he was a clutch player when I played with him. I definitely feel that maybe his his height might play a little bit of a role. I'm not sure. It's like some of the offensive linemen might be a little taller. I think he's in the in the realm of like Drew Brees of a uh, Russell Wilson um, type stature. But I definitely feel like like skills wise. Just make, knowing, understand his uh, his stature in the pocket, knowing that he's, he'll have to like move around a little bit more and be, be mobile with his legs and still be able to throw the ball, stay in the pocket and throw the ball. I, I, I honestly, honestly believe that he he can be an NFL starting quarterback. Um, I think there's always room for growth as well when you do hit that hit hit the ground in the NFL as well as just knowing that you're going to have competition. You're going to have competition, and I feel like iron always going to shop in the iron. And, uh, you know, every, any, just, any, anything's possible at that point. You know, as, again, I was so blessed just to have an opportunity. I wasn't sure if I was going to make it to the NFL myself. But when I did get my shot, I had to make sure that I was going to capitalize on every opportunity I could, especially being undrafted. So I wasn't as blessed to, to get drafted. So I definitely had to take my, my opportunities and, and milk them for what it is and, and don't take it for granted. Yeah, well, hey, listen, speaking of undrafted, so was Tory Gurley, very close friend of ours. He was on last hour. Tell me about you guys' relationship in Green Bay. You play together. Yeah, we have, we have a great relationship. Uh, I definitely uh, bonded with him in our, at our, in our time uh, at Green Bay. And uh, he's still a good friend. I still check in with him on, on Instagram and, uh, and Facebook as well. It's good to see him doing well in the sports commentary world. And uh, I, I definitely wish him well. I know I think he has a little baby boy on the way. With him, him and his beautiful wife, and yes, uh, sir. You know, he, he was a tough player. He was a tough player when, when he was with Green Bay. Long, he was strong. He was willing to play special teams. He was humble enough and hungry. Uh, I definitely feel like we had a lot of depth in the receiver in the receivers room. So I'm not sure if there was any room for him. But I know he made a name for himself in, in the CFL as well. I want to say if he played for Ottawa or Toronto, I believe, and played for least, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but but it was good to see that it was good to see him and you still keep tabs like no matter where your your good friend goes you still keep tabs on him and see how he's doing and it was good to, it was good to see him see watching film that he was still catching deep passes and and long balls and scoring touchdowns even though you know Green Bay wasn't uh, a solid home for him but he found the, he found a solid home elsewhere and um, that's really what you you really want you want to see him succeed no matter what. Jarrett, it's been our pleasure. Thanks for the time. Hopefully we can do it again and uh, enjoy the rest of the, the day and the weekend. Thanks again, Clark. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Go Pack. Packers alum. There you go. Jarrett Bush joining us uh, from Green Bay here today. We'll take a time out. Friends, are you gone? Yeah, I'm gone. Great you have day. a great enjoy weekend. It. Enjoy it. Good day. We'll be right back with a sports update. Moose DuPont will make a return to the program. We got uh, a whole lot going on today on a Football Friday on Game Plus Television, YouTube, and Facebook Live, and 24-hour sports radio for Suds Full Service. Car Wash at rodpeterson.com. How about Head that? to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Capital Ford Lincoln is your used car destination. We're overstocked and priced to move, so shop online or in store to get the best deal on any one of our massive selection of pre owned vehicles. Every pre-owned vehicle at Capital Ford must pass a thorough inspection, ensuring that your buying experience is quick, easy, worry-free, and just like new. So save the depreciation and buy pre-owned. 
Capital Ford Lincoln is your used car destination. 1201 Pasqua Street North in Regina. Introducing Original 16 Hard Seltzer. The refreshing taste of delicious peach with vodka made in Saskatchewan. New Hard Seltzers from Original 16. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop, staffed by PGA of Canada professionals, is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. Don't rack your brain trying to source the equipment and materials you need for your business. Rockstar can operate your entire supply chain, from PO creation to expediting your shipments, all from our office. Leverage the buying power of the Rockstar Buying Group to not only save money and time, but also the headache. From gloves to glue, we can provide it for you. Find out more at rockstar.com. Direct West has been the bridge for me from not dealing with social media or digital presence to having a presence. You have to take the leap of faith, so to say, and I'm glad we have. Direct West has helped us out immensely to get our presence online as far as digitally and also with the social media page. To see the results is just, uh, just puts a smile on your face. <laughs> we started Suds Car Wash in 2003. There's a bit of us in every part of the business. I've been working here since I was about 10 years old. Hard to believe it's been 12 years since. Working with my family has been great. My mom and dad have taught us the importance of hard work. I've been here since I was 10 years old and my dad has taught me a lot about quality work. From all of us at Suds Car Wash, we make your car shine. Business owners and marketers. Okay, we know you think we're pretty cool. That's why we want you to share in the coolness factor. Partner with The Rod Peterson Show and market your business every weekday to sports lovers just like yourself. Take advantage of our many cost-effective commercial and promotional opportunities. Tell the world about your business. Yes, the world. Thanks to Game Plus TV and The Rod Peterson Digital Network. Contact us today and find out how you can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show. The Rod Peterson Show. laid back and kicking it let's head back to the studio here's rock welcome back what a day you want to go for the full studio shot sitting here alone and that's totally fine <laughs> we don't know where moose is lynch is gone and we're rocking and rolling into the weekend and uh i can handle it trust me for those watching, some of the people writing in that are watching on YouTube from Troy and Tirana, he says, come on through, Frenzy. He's priceless. He totally forgets you're on TV. I needed that belly laugh. Darren Workman on YouTube. I was going to try to comment, but Frenzy walking in front of the camera. I can't top that. How about that? How about that? Ryan in uh, Saratoga, New York. Football Friday with John Lynch. Never a dull moment. <sighs> yeah, everybody's talking about the Canadian Premier League and what they said today. I have it in my sports update, so let's go with that. But first, starting with the Blue Jays, lefty Steven Matz is scheduled to start for the Blue Jays today against Philadelphia in their first game back in Dunedin, Florida, following an 11-day, 10-game road trip. Toronto swept the Braves in Atlanta last night to end its extended road swing at 6-4. and four. The Jays have played just 11 games this season at TD Ballpark compared to 26 on the road. They'll host the Phillies for three as part of their 10-game homestand. Now... You Pay attention to this, because I think I got a rant coming, guys. 
The Maple Leafs and Jets get one final tune-up game tonight in Winnipeg before both teams enter the playoffs. It's their final regular season game ahead of the playoffs. Toronto and Montreal will open their first playoff series in 42 years on May the 20th. Edmonton hosts Winnipeg for game one of their first round series Wednesday. Saw the comments from Paul Maurice this morning at his media availability in advance of this game tonight. Leafs and Jets, they're both going to the playoffs, and Paul Maurice says there will be a gentleman's agreement tonight. What did he say? There won't be any hitting? Probably resting guys that need it? And this isn't Bronco plumbing and heating worthy rant, but can you please tell me this? What if I wanted to bet on the game tonight? You going to sit Connor Hellebuck again? What are the Leafs going to do? Are they going to throw David Riddick in goal? Big save, Dave. What? I'm just saying, Clark just said that Jack Campbell's starting. So they're starting their best goalie. You get my point. My point, what if I wanted to bet on the game? You got the Tim Peel, the referee, caught on a hot mic admitting that he made a makeup call in a game, which we've known has been in the game for 100 years, and he gets fired because you're saying we can't affect the integrity of the game because people are betting, and we can't have them thinking that the power plays are even or uneven. I don't even know what they're trying to say because it's going to affect betting. Then you got Paul Maurice tonight saying, ah, it's just an exhibition game, really. We have a gentleman's agreement. We're not going to hit each other. What is the difference? What is the damn difference? How is this right? And I don't have a problem that Paul Maurice said it today. He's just being honest. But guess what? So was Tim Peel. Why are you firing that guy? Has anybody noticed that there's something wrong with this? And and, uh, resting guys at the end of the season has been going on for 100 years too. But it doesn't actually happen. We have to protect the integrity of the game. This affects betting. This affects the line. That it's going to be a no-hitter tonight in Winnipeg. Can somebody please agree with me on this? Or not. I don't care. But I think I'm right. Breaking news today, the Canadian Premier League plans to kick off its third season mid-June to early July in one location without fans. Unlike last year, which turned into a shortened tournament based out of Charlottetown, the Canadian circuit plans a full schedule. Each of the eight clubs will play 28 regular season games with the hope that they will be able to return to home markets with fans in the stands at some point. I'll say it again for those that are slow. The Canadian Premier League, that's the Pro Soccer League of which Saskatchewan's getting a team next year, plans to kick off its third season mid-June to early July in one location without fans. Can we call it a hub center? Because the WHL was so hypersensitive on us calling what they were doing here a bubble, because it wasn't a bubble. So that's what they're doing there. Uh, Jordan Spieth, J.J. Spawn, and plenty of others had little trouble with TBC Craig Ranch north of Dallas yesterday. With Spieth and Spawn sharing the lead heading into the second round today following nine under 63s. It's the Byron Nelson Classic. This sports update for dubnetwork.ca, your number one source for Western Hockey League breaking news and analysis. Visit dubnetwork.ca. And for G2G Protein Bars, that's Ben Cahoon's company. RP Show viewers get 20% off with the promo code RP Show. Order yours now at g2gbars.ca. Overtime's up next. You're watching on Game Plus TV, YouTube and Facebook Live, and 24-hour sports radio for Suds Full Service Car Wash at rodpeterson.com. Listen live. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now.
Direct West provides us with stats and analytics, and, and it's amazing for us to look and see that, you know, each year we're 10 to 20 percent higher on our Google Leads. It's great to see the success that our, our locations are having. The Direct West app gives us an opportunity to be in one place for people to find uh, any of our locations or our commodities. Without Direct West, we would have to be in multiple digital places. I would recommend Direct West. They're great to work with. Some of the challenges we face with the CT technology that we have today is some of the deficiencies in around integration with some of our other systems. The addition of, of two new 40 simulators uh, within the programming of the Saskatchewan Cancer Agency is, is going to have significant impact on, on you know, the care we provide to the people of Saskatchewan. At Prairie Mobile, you can get the phone you want when you want. All smartphones are $0 every day. With convenient locations across Saskatchewan, Prairie Mobile, your Sastel authorized dealer, has you covered. Visit us online at prairiemobile.com. People donate blood for moments like this. But there are lots of reasons why Canada's lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or that donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. Or to help new moms and babies, like Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's lifeline. Capital Ford Lincoln is Truck Nation. Looking to buy your next truck or sell your current one? Capital is Canada's truck destination. Shop online or in store to see the new 2021 Ford F-150, Ranger, Escape, and more. Right now is the best time to lease or finance a new vehicle. Can't find exactly what you're looking for? Let us help by sourcing your vehicle from our dealer network or custom ordering one that is perfect for you. Capital Ford Lincoln is Truck Nation, 1201 Pasqua Street North in Regina. Hey, Rod Squad, now you can join the team with your very own RP Show gear. Head to rodpetersonshop.com and get yours today while supplies last. It's just like we wear on the show, official RP Show gear at rodpetersonshop.com. You got something to say? You want to add to the show? What are you waiting for? Don't just sit there. Say something. Now, back to the studio with Rod. Okay, we'll probably do a little viewer takeover here, but we got a lot of business to take care of first. Not the least with... Not the least of which is our business of the week for uh, MySask411 and Direct West, connecting Saskatchewan business here in the province. Our business of the week, as found by producer Clark, is the flower shop on Hill Avenue. Sounds to me like Clark's visited there. What a guy. A time or two, I'm sure. From fresh cut flowers to sweet treats, the flower shop on Hill Avenue is the perfect spot to find a gift for any occasion. Tropical plants, Maison Burger lamps. And home fragrances and grab-and-go bundles are just a few of the other great decor pieces you'll find when you stop in to check out the showroom, 3424 Hill Avenue in Regina. You can find them on the MySask411 app. It's on my main screen. I say it every week. Right on the bottom, it is a phone book in your hand, digital. Download it today, the MySask411 app, the flower shop on Hill Avenue. Now, to the face-off. And I see that I've got a few people worked up here. The Jets and the Leafs meeting tonight. Paul, Ma uh, Paul Maurice saying that there is going to be a gentleman's agreement with how this game is going to be played. One of our viewers, James Zylstra, has wrote, written in and said that Austin Matthews will not play tonight. He says, by the way, love your show. Thank you, James. I appreciate it. And my, my point on this face-off, and I don't know where Darren is because he hasn't on it because he hadn't. Like, I literally didn't know where you were for a while. Um, I don't know where you stand on this. I'm saying, I don't have a problem. You want to rest players at the end of the year. You'd want to have a no-hitter. Most nights are that way anyways. But that, and by the way, you're not selling tickets tonight, so who really cares? But normally, that's attacking the integrity of the game, and it's been going on for decades. How is it any different than Tim Peel being caught saying they make makeup calls accidentally, and he loses his job? How's Paul Maurice not going to be in heat for this? Am I out to lunch? 
A little bit. Come on! No, a, li- a little bit. You know, him coming out and saying, it's going to be a no-hitter tonight. You know, a gentleman's agreement, we're not going to hit, we're not going to do that. If he's coming out and saying that, I got a little bit of a problem with that. But, you know, we talked about it in the break. You instantly go, this affects betting. And this actually affects the game. That's my, that's my integrity, betting, whatever. What's the difference? But, but I think you expect this. And as a better, you have to know this when you're making your bets. It happens in, in football all the time, in uh, fantasy football or in the NFL. You know, for the most part, when you get down to week 17, they're probably going to rest guys. Starting quarterbacks aren't going to play. That affects the betting lines. So the lines for this game should change, right? You know, the both playoff spots are locked up. So betters should know this going in. That's why your fantasy football championship always happens in week 16. Because week 17 is usually a throwaway. So these games at the end of the year... Should be kind of a throwaway. So you're saying as long as you let the betters know that you're not going to address your full lineup, but there's going to be no hitting, then it's fine. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm arguing with you. That's how you, that's your, that's how I look at it. Yeah. He might've explained it to me. Well, the face off is brought to you by the ultimate fan zone offering officially licensed fan gear from the best lines in sports, Nike, new era, Adidas fanatics game day, ready ship right to your door. Shop online today at ultimatefanzone.ca. And for the mad Greek restaurant in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan's destination for the most delicious Greek cuisine. It's amazing. Ribs, pizza, and more. Visit themadgreekeatery.com today. What about moussaka? What about baklava? Have I had you for the, over there baklava. for that? What about oh souvlaki? Yeah, all of that stuff. They do it all, not just ribs and pizza. So we're covering a lot of ground here. What else do we have to do? Oh, come on. Betting for uh, the Stanley Cup playoffs. Come on, Canada, our official betting partner. Let's get into that. What are they offering here for odds for the Habs and the Leafs? Okay, Darren, you take it away here. This is for how long the series will go. Yeah, it's one of those cool prop bets you can do at Come On. And, and we had Craig Button on earlier this week, and he said that the Leafs will win in four. Maybe the Habs will win a game. Well, those are pretty good odds. If we've got that correctly, I mean, you're going to win some money if, if you get this right. So... Um, I mean, I've got some skin in this game. I've got the Leafs in five. So here's a little change, probably going to win. They actually think that it's not going to go four, uh, that the Habs will find a way to win one. So um, I like it. I think there's uh, great returns there if you think that this one will be over pretty quickly. Go put your bets down on the Leafs and the Habs in round one. Come on. Dot com or the official app you can download right in the palm of your hand. There you go. Come on, Canada's our official betting partner. So, some. F- by the way, today I'm out to lunch, clearly, because in Winnipeg, Tacona Pauly makes a really good point. And whereas is, come on, Rod, he doesn't really control the game other than the lineup, like a ref possibly can. That's fair. And that might be the difference. Who was the NBA ref that got uh, smoked? Oh, man. Tim, so I guess if the officials are doing it, they're affecting the lineup. Troy in Toronto says if you adjust your bet accordingly, if you can't figure that out, you aren't real bright and likely lose money often. I'm just not a good better. I'm smart enough to, for the most part, stay away. Other than the Kentucky Derby and the damn horse took steroids. I know. (laughs) How about that? Tim Donahue, thank you, Ryan, in New York. That's right. See, Notice how everybody joins us for coffee every day here. Well, I love it. And I want, like, my mind was going to say Donnelly because I watch him coach basketball in this community. Are you so calling Neil Donnelly? No. Yeah. And I, that's why I didn't say it because I'm like, <laughs> but it's not him and I can't say his name. So I knew it was really close. Uh, Jordan Ewart watching on YouTube says, we need sports back in Canada. Get vaccinated. Uh, what's the holdup, by the way? I know we're running out of time here, but it's, if, you, if it's like if we all get vaccinated... I saw the prime minister on television telling us all. Did you see it on Sports Center last yeah. night or whatever it was on? And uh, but I'm seeing even if everybody said, OK, I'm in, which is a tall order. But it's just if everybody said I'm in, we don't even have the vaccines here to do it. I know. Right. There's a shortage now. What an absolute dumpster fire. This whole thing is. I go tomorrow so. to get mine. You do. Yeah. Good for you. Tomorrow afternoon. Buckle up. I'm booked. Hey, next week, we got 15 seconds. Tell people what's going on. I'm gone. Yeah, Rod's not here, so I'm hosting the show. 
We'll have some fun. <laughs> That's about it. Okay. And it's easy. Content's full. NHL playoffs all week. See Moose and the boys here Monday at noon Eastern on Game Plus. I never told you to shut up. <laughs> well, a couple times. Yeah. How about that? How about that? How about that? How about that?